Hi folks, it's Andy. Uh, hope you're having a good day. Uh, random video. Um, I'm not sure why I'm even recording it, but you know me, I like to try, try lots of different things, uh, see what's popular and what isn't and what have you. I guess this is a kind of, kind of vlog type video, um, for want of a better term. So it's going to be very rambly um, and it might not be super coherent because I haven't really, haven't really planned it out. Um, I haven't, <clears throat> sat down and written a script or thought oh I, I definitely want to talk about this or anything like that I'm just kind of recording um some of the thoughts I've been having recently about Kendall um and particularly my own personal Kendall journey um I'm parked up outside the uh, outside the Kendall Star office uh before before we open so none of the staff are here yet <coughs> um but they'll probably be here soon um <clears throat> so yeah um yeah i've just uh i've just finished um at the gym i've been going to the gym now they've been open um for about uh well for two weeks for exact well yeah just over just over two weeks uh here in the uk they've been open again uh, and i've been going uh pretty much every day for the last two weeks um for you know um Except the weekends, I don't go weekends. Weekends is I spend with my family. Um, but yeah, um, on my you know before before coming into the office, I've been been hitting the gym. Um, people are going to ask me what I do there. I just I just run on the treadmill. I don't do any complicated um, weight training regimes or anything like that. I just um, I've just been trying to run. Um, in the mornings uh, and I'm, I made a little personal goal to myself to try and run um, 5k uh, in less than 30 minutes uh, I've been running 5k every day um, I know that's not that far probably to you guys that are really into running and stuff but for a fat old guy like me it's quite <laughs> it's quite a slog um, and yeah uh, this morning um, this morning let me see if I can get it up uh, right, hang on a sec good angle good camera angle there <laughs> see if i can uh i'm i'm quite proud of myself because uh where are we because i managed it um see if i can switch this camera around can i don't do that i don't do that i don't know how about that can you see, can you see? See, I did, I did it anyway, 20, 29 minutes this morning. Um, so yeah, quite happy with that, uh, which is good. But uh, that isn't the point of what I really want to talk about. I mean, why have I been going to the gym even? Um, I've been thinking a lot uh, about sort of the national team, um, the British national team. It was something that was a, a big part of my Kendall life for a very long time, um, like 13 years, something like that. Um, Whilst I lived over in Japan, I used to travel back for the European Championships and the World Championships, stuff like that. Uh, and yeah, about three years ago, uh, after the Europeans in Macedonia, uh, I retired from the team, <coughs> uh, which was a bit disappointing for me because I hadn't achieved everything I'd wanted, wanted to achieve uh, during my time on it. Um, but at the same time, I just started Kendall Star. Um, I've, like I say, I've, I've got a family, you know, I've got two kids. Um, and for me, being a member of the national team was a, a massive commitment in my life. Um, in the run up to Tokyo, for example, the world's in Tokyo, I was, I was training eight or nine times a week in the dojo and I was hitting the gym. You know, I wasn't seeing my kids that much, you know, um, and it's not great. Uh, so, yeah, um, so I took a step back from it. But obviously, like, <clears throat> Kendall Star thankfully wonderfully has been going super super brilliant um and although this sort of the you know the pandemic has affected us as it's affected everybody um you know we're coming through the other side of it um a massive thank you to all of our wonderful supporters and customers that have helped us get through it um but yeah uh you know it, it we're at a stage now where i've got i've got a team of staff and it you know i i, I it, it doesn't it doesn't need quite the same uh really um you know 24 7 attention from me as it did in the in the beginning um though it still takes up a lot of it um so you know and obviously with the world championships in a year's time hopefully fingers crossed um uh you know it made me think a little bit you know maybe maybe i could still maybe i could still 
do it. You know, maybe I could still play. Uh, I mean, I'm not getting any younger, and I'm not. I'm not as old as I look. <laughs> uh, I'm, I was 37 years old the other day. Um, so no spring chicken, I get that. But um, at the same time, I'm kind of. Um, I'm still. Uh, you know, I mean there's a lot of there's players that are older than me and they're still very very successful right so it's not out of the remit of what's possible um it's just you know i've been juggling with the idea of whether i'm able to really give it the commitment it deserves uh because just just joining the team is not good enough you know just joining the, the tournament just entering the, the world championships and it would be my fifth time to end i'd been in it four times so it'd be nice to do five but um just entering entering is not good enough i have to really give everything i've got um so yeah um that's something that i've been thinking about a lot <clears throat> the last couple of weeks uh whether it's something i should really turn my focus to um and yeah uh the reason I'm kind of talking about that is I, I posted a video from on the blog the other day and it, it was um, how, how to improve at Kendo by uh, some of the, the best players in Japan. And it was like a video from from a seminar that was held in Japan um, with some of the best. You know, there was like Yamamoto Mariko, who's multiple old Japan champion, uh, uh, Sakuma Yoko, uh, who is the world champion. She was a world champion in Italy. Um, you had like a uh, Kiwada Daiki Sensei in there as well, all Japan champion. Uh, you know, just some great players. And uh, it, you know, the kid asked them, "How do you get stronger at kendo?" And there was some really, really great answers, um, which I translated in the blog article. And I said, you know, and it said. Um, first, Yamamoto uh, Mariko said, you have to put in twice as much effort as everybody else, which I thought was really inspiring. Um, and more importantly then, I think it was Kiwala Sensei that went on to say you have to have a specific goal, a target. Um, I think it was Sakuma Sensei said that actually. Uh, I think she said that. Um, you have to have a specific target to work towards. And that's something I really, really have always thought about in Kendo. I've always had these specific targets. And, you know, with the national team being such a massive part of my life in Kendo for all those years, when I stepped back from that, it wasn't, you know, I was worried at the time whether it would be, you know, what, what, what would happen in a way because it had been such a huge part of it. But, um, I focused on getting my sixth dan, and I was able to uh, achieve that. Um, and then I wanted to get my denshi, and I got my denshi, and that was cool. Um, so now it was like, okay, well, what's the next goal? So this is what brought me to this sort of thing. Uh, and like, this is a super rambly video. I'm sorry, um, but this is what brought me to this sort of idea of, you know, should I go back to that? Should I go back to you know, joining the national team and stuff like that. And I kind of started thinking about it and I've been acting as a, a assistant coach uh, to the national team for the last couple of years as well. I was at the last Europeans uh, with the team as a coach. Um, and it brought me a, a lot of satisfaction, um, more probably than actually playing in it. And that's, that's something else um, because I, in my last couple of years in Japan, I got into coaching and teaching um, of juniors um, and I really started to understand the benefit and the satisfaction. Again, you know, um, I was getting out of uh, coaching people, whether they were kids or adults, and seeing them take that and it worked for them. And that was really, that was really something for me, you know, and um, probably something more than competing in it myself. Uh, so, yeah. Um, what I, what I kind of, I don't know, like I say, I'm a bit of a mess all over the place with the thoughts on this, but kind of got me thinking about the, you know, the, the, the team that we've got at the minute and whether I, I need to be in it, um, whether there's a place for me, not whether I'm good enough to get on the team, but I probably am to be honest, but it's not, it's not the point. It's more, um, the idea of this is kind of, whether whether now is the right time for me to come back to that 
I don't think that's what needs to be happening now. Um, so I, I've kind of started to step away from that idea a bit again. <laughs> so, you know, like I say, you're going to have to forgive me a bit for all this ramble, but um, I don't think it is. I don't think, I don't think returning to the world championships or returning to the national team is, is the right thing for me to do. I think, I think pursuing uh, my position as a, as part of the coaching team, as a assistant coach, um, to the team i think I've, i think i think i can really bring a, a, a benefit to the national team in that regard uh, and i'm probably better at that than i am as a player uh, i was never a super successful player um i had some reasonable success in some areas but i was never super successful there's a lot of players better than me <laughs> uh, on the european so circuit so um, i get that um but i think you know i, I think i can do a good job um as part of the coaching team uh, and I think as well that um, that's in itself though is not it, it's not enough uh, you know like I say I need to have these goals for my own progression and like I say getting sick Dan was one Renshi was one and of course on the horizon there's seventh Dan and of course I, I intend to achieve eighth Dan um, I certainly intend to challenge that uh, in any case um, but in the sort of mid-term, um, I haven't competed in Shi'ai in over a year now, and that's really strange for me. Uh, so there's, there's an element, because I've always said that Shi'ai is such an important aspect of kendo development, and that's why you see even the, the very high-level senseis in Japan, they still compete in, in Shi'ai. Um, so that's something that I have to... I have to find a place for in my kendo right now and i think the what the places i'm, I'm going to find that what I, I think what i've come to the conclusion i've come to um after this two weeks so far and i intend to continue training every morning now i'm not able to train in a dojo right now um so you know me going to the gym early in the morning uh, and trying to push myself to achieve a goal uh that's that's my replacement for my asa gego right now um <clears throat> but anyway um i think i'm sort of my goals moving forward have to be um i think it's the kyoto taikai and i've been thinking about this a lot the kyoto taikai is the the, the old japan uh, the zen nihon embu, embu taikai uh and it's a very very interesting tournament it's not a tournament uh, event um because it's it's not a tournament that's what's very interesting about it it's it's an embu taikai it's an embu gi so um, you can't enter it until your uh, Nenshi is for Nenshi, Kyoshi and Hanshi um, to join. Uh, if you're not Japanese, you're allowed to enter at sixth dan actually. But um, I, I, I wanted to enter on the same sort of basis as the, the Japanese competitors. So I, I waited until I got Nenshi. Um, and it's in May, it's in Golden Week every year. And the unique thing about it is that it's, um, it's not a tournament. So... You, you get one match, you get one match, um, you don't, if you win, that's it, you don't get to progress, you get one match, win or lose, or draw, and that's the end, uh, nothing else. So, uh, yeah, I kind of, um, I kind of been thinking about it a lot, I mean, it's always been an ambition of mine to join the Kyoto Taikai, but I think that's a bigger event for me, personally, now, even in the World Championships. Um, because I was thinking a lot about this and it's, it's just under a year away. It's in May, like I said, and I intend now to, to have that as my sort of focus, my goal to train towards in my own kendos as my, um, my target. And the, the thing is, is it's, it's one match and what could be closer what could be closer to real Shinken Shobu for want of a better term in Kendo? Um, because it's it's one whole year of training towards just two minutes, just one match. Um, and I think I think that's part of the point of it. There's even more resting on it. It's it's your it's your own it's your own final match. Uh, you know, you fight in a tournament to get to the finals to have that one match in the finals. Um, 
but the Kyoto Taikai kind of skips that preamble and right away you're in that Kesho in that final match and everything's resting on it and I think that's the real test I think that's a real test of your of your fortitude um, and I think it's going to be really tough uh, actually so I think that's something I have to endure um, and I'm looking looking forward to it at the same time I'm extremely nervous about it especially I'll have to travel to Japan specifically for that um, but I think that's part of what I think that's part of what the Shiai Shiai means to test together I think that's part of what the Shiai means um, so yeah um, I'm not planning to, to return to uh, competitive uh, play as a member of the national team um, so sorry if I clickbaited you with the title of the video uh, <laughs> um, I'm 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 re continuing to uh, play a role as the coach for the time being uh, the, the assistant coach um, for the time being uh, because I, I feel like I, I add value to the team by doing that um, and I think going forward, the Kyoto Taikai is going to be my, my sort of, my goal. Because um, the other thing as well, of course, is I'll, I'll be against other people of similar age who are also Denshi. So what could be a better preparation for 7th Dan? The 7th Dan test. Um, so there's that too. Um, so yeah. Uh, I don't know how to draw this to a point because I didn't plan it out. <laughs> I just pulled up and started filming. Um, but yeah, um, what did you think? What, you know, um, do you like this sort of video? Should I keep doing them? Should I do some more? Uh, maybe. I might do. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to commit to that. <laughs> but um, what I would say is, uh, yeah, thank you to everybody uh, for watching me on YouTube and supporting everything that I do. Um, and yeah joining me for this kind of weird video where i've just kind of rambled um i don't know if i've really made any sense or made any points but yeah let's summarize i'm not joining the national team again thought about it decided against it i think the kyoto taika is probably a bigger more important tournament for me personally um so that's my my goal um going forward uh maybe i'll keep track of it via these type of blogs my sort of road towards it maybe i won't <laughs> um but yeah make goals and try to accomplish them if you need to, if you if you were asking me what to do in the gym just run <laughs> that's what i did i just ran just run i just run i don't touch i don't touch any weights or anything like that um i do sabiri instead with a sabiri tour um i'm not saying that they're not beneficial i think they, they, they probably are i just don't know what i'm doing so I just run. <laughs> um, yeah. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Uh, I'll be putting up Kendall Rant later. This isn't a re replacement for Kendall Rant. I'll put up Kendall Rant later on. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll see you in that video. Bye. <laughs>